All right, Revelation chapter 18. We're continuing our world history lesson. Uh, we've learned a lot of interesting things. Like I told you, if you're a Bible-believing Christian uh, who lives in America, this is probably the most important timeline that you want to pay attention to. And boy, did you learn a lot. There's no doubt that God and the devil, that uh, there's a war going on. And there are invisible hands behind the scenes with God and the devil at work where you can see a battle going on for basically the soul of that country, America. As I've talked to you before, the beginning of all globalists and elitists that you hear about today or secret insidious hands behind the scenes all comes at this important timeline, at the birth of America, believe it or not. Why? Because the devil knows that he's going to have to attack really hard. So he had to do it underground. The Roman Catholic Church, never forget your enemy. They are the number one enemy. They have been the enemy of church history from beginning to end. Why? Because Rome's is the enemy and it will be where the Antichrist will come from in the future. So we're going to go to Revelation chapter 18. This passage is about the Roman Catholic Church. It is also called Babylon. Uh, it is from that uh, Babylonian religion of Semiramis and Nimrod, for some of you who didn't know. So that spirit of Babylon continued through the Catholic Church. If we look at Revelation chapter 18, notice what is known about Babylon that you want to keep an eye out for her. Verse 9, And the kings of the earth, who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her, shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Now notice right here that kings of the earth are still under her stronghold, that she still has an influence. You'll notice in verse 11, And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all fine wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble. Uh, and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour, wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. Now notice right here that the Roman Catholic Church not only has a stronghold with the kings of the nation, foreign policy, but also with uh, merchandise, with uh, foreign trades and goods across the seas and land. Another one to keep in mind about the Roman Catholic Church, we shall see right here in verse, oh, what would be a good verse right here? Verse 23, And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For the merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. So all the nations are still deceived by her. Now, remember, Martin Luther, he did the job where he was able to start the crack in the Holy Roman Empire. Then the Anabaptists, they were able to continue on from a Bible-believing line, especially with what Luther did. And because of that, we see later on that the Baptist heritage was preserved and that they were able to have a, a foothold in America. Amen. And as a matter of fact, your constitution, the only thing that we could uh, praise the Lord about and yeah. see something Christian about it is the First Amendment. If you look at freedom of speech, you'll see it's not about CNN, defending CNN, as all liberal, uh, liberal news journalists would like to harp on. Notice the context of the First Amendment has to do with religious liberty. That is extremely important to understand, and you're going to understand that later when we cover the French Revolution. So, the Baptist distinctive is what made America great to begin with. Remember that independent mindset of America came from the independent Baptist church. It didn't come from Calvinists, remember, because they were state church mindset as the Holy Roman Empire, the Catholics. So you got uh, Americans have Baptists to thank. So that's how God preserved and uh, protected the country where Bible believers can continue on their movement and their spread of the gospel. So we've seen the whole totality and summary of in America. We've seen the interesting parts where there's no doubt God's hand was behind the pilgrims uh, when they came for the first Thanksgiving, even behind their apostasy during the King Philip's War. 
and during a time where they needed the Great Awakening revivals. And because of that, there was a revival spread about, and the American Revolutionary War and the uh, preservation of life of George Washington, we can see God's hand behind the scene on that one. And the Baptists were a lot to be thanked for. Washington and uh, uh, had the Baptists to thank for. Remember, they made up uh, the chaplains and a huge percentage of the military soldiers during the American Revolutionary War. And recall that Thomas Jefferson, Madison, and those big names that you hear about being presidents of the United States, they were the ones defending Baptist preachers that time. Why? They weren't following the Calvinist, Anglican, uh, state church mindset. That's why Baptist heritage is extremely important, and that's why uh, we emphasize attending a Baptist church, Amen. not the other churches, Amen. because of our history. So the devil realized that, so he had to go underground. And that's why the history is so confusing, where you see masonry so much intermingled with the Christian beginnings of America. And I've explained about that. There was confusion. Masons claimed that nearly all presidents of the United States were Masons except, uh, except the Adams. But as I've shown you before, George Washington, he was baptized by a Baptist minister. Now remember, the strong Baptist distinctive is they cannot baptize a person unless he's a saved adult male. So that's a very high chance that Washington was a saved Christian. Also, George Washington, when he was confronted about masonry, he wrote in his own words, to a preacher who was concerned about that, mentioning that he is not a Mason. Madison didn't know much about the Masons, so then he also wrote a letter uh, agreeing about uh, the infiltration of Masons. And also, Adams was the one who really saw it. So Adams, like he, he was very clear that these Masons are, the, uh, are dangerous people. Watch out for them. Washington even admitted that I've heard the... Uh, the infamous, uh, the insidious tactics of the Illuminati. So Masons are all tied to Illuminati, as I've mentioned to you before, that within the uh, Illuminati, there were Masons and Jesuits combining forces together. I'm not gonna get into the history of that. Jesuit, the Roman power is always there. Never forget that, they're always there. So because Roman power lost its foothold and control from Luther and the Baptist growth and the huge Baptist influence, that's why they can't be public anymore. They have to be private. They have to go underground. So Rome still has a stronghold on the people and countries, but not publicly anymore. How they did it was through, uh, Dr. Upman did a very good job, which I'm going to point out a little later on, but that's why I pointed out Revelation 18. You don't have to be a dictator where you ha control all the world and they have to follow you. You can do it through relationships, through being a diplomat of foreign relations as well as foreign trading. Okay, the Catholic Church is extremely sneaky. So that's what they did publicly through such uh, private ways, but the more private means was through the Illuminati, as I've told you. Adam Weishaupt was trained by a Jesuit, that's a historical fact, and then uh, he combined the Masonic teachings as well as the Jesuit methods to create the Illuminati. Now that's a historical fact, okay? You can find that uh, source on that. But anyways, when we go to William Grady's book, again, I'm quoting from his book, How Satan Turned America Against God, on page 306, and I'll continue on about uh, Adam Weishaupt and then the infamous Illuminati with the Jesuits uh, behind the scene. So here we go. In reality, the Illuminati have had only one real goal that encompasses all the rest. The cult's founder declared this, Adam Weishaupt, Behold our secret, if in order to destroy all Christianity, all religion, we have pretended to have the sole true religion, remember that the end justifies the means. Where did he learn that from? Remember, that's from a Loyola's organization, the Jesuits. He, uh, it's all from Jesuit, uh, Jesuit training. You can't separate Catholic from the insidious workings. And that the wise ought to take all the means to do good, which the wicked take to do, to eat, to, uh, to do evil. So they want to wipe it all out. Any religion that opposes them, Christianity, etc., so he's going to do what the wicked people do because the end justifies the means. To pursue his devilish agenda, 
Weiss helped develop an elaborate system of Jesuit-style recruitment and training. Webster, citing Weishaupt, so this is what Weishaupt did, quote, in order to give a good appearance to the order, Weishaupt particularly indicates the necessity for enlisting esteemed and respectable persons. So this is how he built his following, the Illuminati. Uh, but above all, young men whom he regards as the most likely subjects. I cannot use men as they are, he observes, but I must first form them. Youth naturally lends itself best to this process. Seek the society of young people, Weishaupt writes to Ajax. Watch them, and if one of them pleases you, lay your hand on him. Seek out young and already skillful people. Our people must be engaging, enterprising, intriguing, and adroit, above all the first. Understandably, uh, so end of quote. Understandably, teachers and especially writers were viewed as the ultimate prospects. Weishaupt states, quote, If a writer publishes anything that attracts notice and is in itself just but does not accord with our plan, we must endeavor to win him over or decry him. In like manner, we must try to obtain an influence in the military academies. This may be of mighty consequence. The print ha printing houses, booksellers' shops, chapters, and in short, all offices which have any effect, either in forming or in managing or even in di directing the mind of man. Painting and engraving are highly worth our care. So he's heading toward the arts and writing, media, and the young people. Sounds like a lot of what the liberal do liberals dominate today, right? All right, the cunning Weiss, end of quote. The cunning Weishaupt was also interested in tapping the Christian community. Professor Robison quoting Spartacus. So Spartacus, remember, is Weishaupt's celebrity Hollywood actor name. You wonder where they get names like that anyway. Quote, I have contrived an explanation which has every advantage, is inviting to Christians of every communion, gradually frees them of all religious prejudices, and cultivates the social virtues. My means are effectual and are irresistible. Our secret association works in a way that nothing can withstand. Wow. End of quote. In his private correspondence, Weishaupt mocked the foolish clergy who fell for his religious appeals. Quote, the most wonderful thing is that great Protestant and Reformed theologians who belong to Illuminism still believe that the religious teaching imparted in it contains the true and genuine spirit of the Christian religion. Oh, men of what cannot you be persuaded? I never thought that I should become the founder of a new religion. Wow, infiltrating Calvinist groups. That's why you get Calvinists and then people like James White where you know, they promote modern Bible versions, but if, and they brag about the Nestle Allen text, but all you have to do is go to that Nestle Allen text. Yeah. Who are the ones working with these Protestants or Reformed or other denomination people translating the Greek text and the modern Bible translations? Catholics, mm -hmm. even Jesuits. How about that? All right. Let's see here. Here's some other th quotes. Now, the infiltration of Freemasonry. Now, you want to hear how he recruits the disciples from there, right? E Ever the master strategist, Weishaupt soon set his eye... Uh, so I'm on page 312 of Grady's book. Even the master strategist, Weishaupt, soon set his eyes on the order's ultimate conquest with the crossover conversion of Joseph Balsamo from masonry to Illuminism, the Jewish Comte de Caglio Cagliostro, if I'm pronouncing that right, became a key double agent whose self-confessed mission was, quote, to work so as to turn Freemasonry in the direction of Weishaupt's projects, end of quote. Serpents like Spartacus, a.k.a. Weishaupt, remember, will always be looking for new rocks they can crawl under to hide. The up-and-running network of Freemasonry, especially the Continental version, was viewed as ripe for the picking. Unaware that his uh, secret correspondence will later be uncovered, Weishaupt told the world where he would henceforth conceal his order, writing, quote, None is fitter than the three lower degrees of Freemasonry. The public is accustomed to it, expects little from it, and therefore takes little notice of it. 
end of quote. After considerable political maneuvering by Balsamo, Mendelssohn, Weishaupt, and others, the dreaded marriage between Freemasonry and the Order of the Illuminati was consummated on July 16, 1782, at the historic Congress de uh, Wilhelmsbad in the Hesse province of Germany. Webster states, quote, what passed at this terrible Congress will never be known to the outside world, for even those men who had been drawn unwittingly into the movement and now heard for the first time the real designs of the leaders were under oath to reveal nothing, end of quote. The Freemason Comte de Viru, if I'm pronouncing his last name right, a shell-shocked member of the Lodge in Lyons, could hardly conceal his alarm when questioned about the proceedings. He said this, quote, I will not confide them to you. I can only tell you that all this is very much more serious than you think. The conspiracy which is being woven is so well thought out that it will be, so as to speak, impossible for the monarchy and the church to escape from it. That's the Freemason. End of quote. It is known that the quote unquote Jewish question was addressed with a resolution being passed that quote that henceforth Jews should be no longer be excluded from the lodges end of quote why the devil wants God's blessing in some way obviously or steal it for himself so go for God's chosen people at the same time it was decided to move the headquarters of Illuminized Freemasonry to Frankfurt Germany the center of Jewish finance controlled by such men as, what's the big name, You'll, you can guess, Jewish banker, Rothschild, as well as other Jewish bankers, Oppenheimer, Wertheimer, Schuster, Speyer, Stern, and others. All right. So you can see how they're all combining together. So that's where you get the top of the pyramid, where you get Masons, uh, Rothschilds, Jew the bankers uh, combined with uh, uh, did I say Jesuit? So I probably said Jesuit anyway. <laughs> okay, anyways, now here's the next part of the reading. This is Weishaupt's MO, all right? So Grady mentions five things from Weishaupt's MO, for some of you who didn't know. This is on page uh, 316 to uh, 322. I would highly... Uh, recommend if to everyone to actually really buy this book, okay? He did a very good job showing uh, the devil and the Lord behind the scenes how it was a battle for the, basically the country's soul, so to speak. Anyway, uh, let's see. His MO is as follows. Weishaupt's blueprint will be one, ma media manipulation. Control the media, you brainwash the whole world. That's pretty much a good job. Think about even the internet right now, what it's doing. All right? Moral depravity. Increase of sin. Yeah, it seemed to work. That's why the world's falling apart to the Antichrist kingdom. Engineered agitation. Yeah, you have to engineer, plot the chaos, catastrophe. Pretend they're all an accident or a coincidence. Believe it or not, politically correct race integration, racial integration. You might say, why? Because that way you can get everyone in one control. But then think about it. That's why um, the Lord originally, as I've told you before, he saw that with Nimrod when in the Tower of Babel. See, all these nations combining. That's why he split them up. That's why he split them up. But then the Antichrist, he's trying to gather them again. Why? So that you can be under control of one leader again. For now, it's under United Nations. Mm -hmm. For now, they call it democracy. When you get certain chairmen in a committee, so then the numbers of leaders just get smaller, smaller, smaller. Elites get smaller, smaller, until you probably will get one one day. Anyways, the last one, unmitigated fear and intimidation. It's always fear, and yeah, you're seeing it all over right now fear and then you intimidate them. Oh, you're a Christian or, oh, you voted for who, what? And that's what they do. Where do liberals get these ideas from? It makes you wonder. Well, anyway, I'll 
when we hit the 2020 first century, you might be a little shocked, okay? Uh, we're, we're just going back in history. One at a time, right? <laughs> Page 321. Is it any wonder, therefore, that the order of the Illuminati was officially suppressed by the Bavarian government in 1786? While numbers of the society were arrested, others fled the country with bounties on their heads. Zwack to England, Spartacus to Switzerland. Such was the alarm that Bavarian authorities went to the trouble to forward copies of Weishaupt's confiscated papers to every government in Europe. So you can see right here, this is historical, okay? This is part of history. You can't deny this. Uh, when did you hear this in history class? However, still reports this, quote, Unfortunately, the rulers of Europe, possibly out of pride and possibly out of the unbelievability of such an extravagant scheme, refused to take the Bavarian government's warning or the Illuminati seriously." End of quote. The Jesuit train Weishaupt had anticipated the eventual government suppression. In fact, he had planned for such an encounter to ensure an, either an, either, uh, an even greater cloak of secrecy for his future clandestine activities. Oh, so he jumps ahead of time in case his operation fails. He has a plot. In an earlier letter to Cato, this is what Weishaupt wrote. I have considered everything and so prepare it, prepared it that if the order, the Illuminati, should this day go to ruin, I shall in a year reestablish it more brilliant than ever. End of quote. This would be achieved in conjunction with this oft-repeated dictum, quote, the great strength of our order lies in its concealment. Let it never appear in any place in its own name, but always covered by another name and another occupation. That's very important to understand. That's why Illuminati supposedly disappeared. Why? They just keep changing names. Webster concludes the following. This apparent breakup of the society admirably served the purpose of the conspirators who now diligently circulated the news that Illuminism had ceased to exist. The Illuminati is gone. So if you go to trustworthy Wikipedia, because they're always very trustworthy authors, you know, it's gone, you know, and stuff like that. See, deception. A deception carried on ever since by interested historians anxious to suppress the truth about its subsequent activities. The truth is that not until Illuminism had been apparently extinguished in Bavaria was it able to make its formidable influence felt abroad and public anxiety being laid, it could secretly extend its organization over the whole civilized world. End of quote. In 1814, 28 years after the Illuminati was supposedly eradicated, Francois Charles de Berkheim special commissioner of police at Mayence, Bavaria, was compelled to file an official report on the secret societies of Germany. Remember, the, the Bavarian government was the one that closed it down. Yeah. So this is a special commissioner of police. Let's see what he has to say. Quote, the oldest and most dangerous association is that which is generally known under the denomination of the Illuminés. Illuminati, and of which the foundation goes back toward the middle of the last century. Bavaria was its cradle. It is said that it had for founders several chiefs of the order of the Jesuits. But this opinion, advanced perhaps at random, is founded only on uncertain premises. Of course, there's not much you can dig up out of that. In any case, in a short time, it did make rapid progress. And the Bavarian government recognized the necessity of employing methods of repression against it and even of driving away several of the principal sectaries. But it could not eradicate the germ of the evil. The Illuminés who remained in Bavaria obliged to wrap themselves in darkness so as to escape the eye of authority became only the more formidable, the rigorous measures of which they were the object, adorned by the title of persecution, 
liberal mindset, right? Victimization card. Gain them new proselytes whilst the banished members went to carry the principles of the association into other states. Thus, in a few years, Illuminism multiplied its hotbeds all through the south of Germany. And as a consequence, in Saxony, in Prussia, in Sweden, and even in Russia, the doctrine of Illuminism is subversive of every kind of monarchy, unlimited liberty, absolute leveling down, such is a fundamental dogma of the sect to break the ties that bind the sovereign to the citizen of a state that is the object of all its efforts. No doubt some of the principal chiefs amongst, amongst them, whom are numbered men, distinguished for their fortune, their birth, and the dignities with which they are invested, are not the dupes of these demagogic dreams. They hope to find in the popular emotions they stir up. Keep an eye on that one. Popular emotions nowadays, that's how you grab a following. Now you think and pray about that for a while. Anyway, they stir up the means of seizing the reins of power, or at any rate of increasing their wealth and their credit. But the crowd of adepts believe in it religiously, and in order to reach the goal shown to them, they maintain incessantly a hostile attitude towards sovereigns. The catechism of the sect, is composed of a very small number of articles which might even be reduced to this single principle. The quote is, to arm the opinion of the peoples against sovereigns and to work by every method for the fall of monarchic uh, governments in order to found in their place systems of absolute independence. Notice how very clever this is. Now, this sounds like a Baptist distinctive, independence rights of the people. But see, the devil's clever. He sees that power, which is why the French Revolution, the Jesuits were behind that. And you would think it's the same principle as the Constitution, but actually there is a huge key difference. You know what the key difference is? Even though they boast about liberty, equality, fraternity, garbage like that, the difference is in the, that First Amendment, the context is religious liberty. This is anti-religion, if you might recall. This one was a Christian mindset. That's huge importance. They weren't thinking Islam, remember, when they wrote that. They were thinking about their foundation of Christianity. That's a huge important. The most powerful thing is when you have a, a Christian groundwork of independence. That's one of the most powerful things. That's why... Uh, we're not just Baptist by Christian denomination. We're an independent Baptist church. But all other denominations you hear about, Reformed churches, Presbyterian, and even Southern Baptists and other Baptists, they're all tied. They're tied to an organization. This is huge. Okay, let's continue on. Uh, I'm going to spend a long time here. I'm going to talk about Illuminati for five weeks if I don't get this over with. All right, let's get this over with. As the principal, uh, so the, remember, the special commissioner of police is continuing on here. As the principal force of the Illuminates lies in the power of opinions, they have set themselves out from the beginning to make proselytes amongst the men who through their profession exercise a direct influence on minds, such as literatures, savants, and above all, professors. Above all, professors. Now, remember, like I told you, the Jesuits found huge success in the educated schools. Why do you think churches fell away? He started with schools, with the revised version that came out. That was the start of the apostasy. It's that school infiltration. So when Christians boast about sc Christian scholarship education, they don't know much about their history on that one. Uh, let's see. Anyway, continuing on. La, 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 la. The latter in their chairs, the former in their writings, propagate the principles of the sect by disguising the poison that they circulate under a thousand different forms. These germs, often imperceptible to the eyes of the vulgar, are afterwards developed by the adepts of the societies they frequent. They visit all kinds of different societies. You know, clubs, secret clubs. It makes you wonder. And the most obscure wording is thus brought to the understanding of the least discerning. They always use that abstract language to deceive the simple-minded people. It is, it is above all in the universities that Illuminism has always found 
and always will find numerous recruits. Can I repeat that again? Did you hear that? It is a, this is a good warning. It is above all in the universities that Illuminism has always found and always will find numerous recruits. Why do the liberals make a big deal about Genesis 3 and make that a positive reference? Your eyes shall be open. Illumination. Where do they learn that kind of garbage from? All the way back to Jesuits and Wise House people who are infiltrating the schools. And secular lost people or atheists find an attraction to that. Those, so they spread it out without knowing that they've been influenced. Birds of a feather flock together. Atheists and Catholics, they can sure flock together. Now you go home and pray about that if I offended somebody. All right, end of quote from the special commissioner. Grady continues writing, In 1786, the same year as the Bavarian expulsion, Spartacus established his first lodge of the Illuminati on American soil in James Madison's Virginia. Fourteen others followed rapidly in other cities. The ultimate serpent had finally slithered into paradise. Bavarian government shut them down, but they slipped into America now. Now, the battle for Washington, D.C. is a highly recommended chapter, especially for those who are confused by Christian foundations and Masonic foundations. Because, uh, you know, the, the, even the flag they claim is a Masonic connection or some kind of satanic connection with the stars connecting to the zodiac and the stripes and all that. Uh, but there's undoubtedly the building structures in Washington, D.C., you see Masonic stuff. But the thing is this, when you study that on both sides, it is confusion. You might say, that's confusing. That's right. Who's the author of confusion? Yeah, come on. The devil. The devil. His job is where there's some kind of Christian foundations. He puts some Masonic, satanic things in the middle of that. So you get so messed up. But he did a very good job explaining this. Like Washington... Um, you might recall that he, uh, the infamous picture where he wore the apron and the Masons, they go, I, I think they still do today, but they just go to Washington to see, they hold a ceremony together and then they'll boast about, you know, how their foundation started in America and that America's birth was consisted of free ma uh, Masonic connections or foundations. So it is so confusing. But like I told you before, the job of these elitists is to infiltrate and tie themselves and connect to any historical or important person so that people can be deceived into thinking that, oh, these big shots, these big names are connected to Masons, so I think these Masons are not really that bad people. That's why the liberal world and the common world don't see anything wrong with Masons. Why? They hold hands with too many political powers. They don't see anything wrong with the Catholic Church because they hold hands with too many political powers, news media, universities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they don't see anything uh, evil behind that because they just have too many connections. Remember, like I told you before, that doesn't prove that these politicians and these big names and leaders are Masons or Catholics. The job of Catholicism, Masonry, and these uh, Illuminati people is to connect with them and to make it so confusing that the public will combine the powerful world who, are, who may not be Masons and Catholics, but they'll combine them as one with Catholicism and Masonry. And they'll treat them all the same and as equals and nothing wrong with all of you. You go home and pray about that for a while. But Grady did a good job on that one on chapter 10. So my advice is this. My advice is, like I told you before, is just know enough of the evil. But remember this. You'll never understand Satan's workings. Don't try to figure it out. You go down that hole, you just might get demon-possessed. All right? A lot of spirit stuff in there, and you dig down on that conspiracy rabbit hole and the occult and stuff like that, it'll just mess with your mind. And you might call something Christian satanic if you're not careful. And that's the devil's job, is to mingle so much of Satanism with the Christian foundation, Christian workings, you might just call it satanic. And that's why they call the King James Bible Masonic Bible. 
That, I must, uh, that must please the devil a lot. That's why they'll say stuff like uh, George Washington, uh, whom, who is very likely a safe person, that he's a Mason. Or American foundations that had no Baptist distinctive whatsoever. Be careful not to call God's working behind the scene the devil's. So you got to be careful of that. So my advice is, is just know enough that Satan infiltrated and put an influence and confused it. That's all you need to know. You cannot clarify Satan's confusion. He's the author of confusion. You can't clarify, this is, uh, this is Christian, this is Masonic. This is Illuminati, this is Christian, and... No, you cannot do that. It's a rabbit hole that never ends, okay? These people did a very good job to cover up history and cover their tracks. But this chapter, I highly recommend it. Read that one, which is uh, the chapter, The Battle for Washington, D.C. in Grady's book. All right, I'm just going to read a couple here, though, okay? And then I got to get on, okay? Adam Weishaupt was only 38 years old when his order of the Illuminati was formally run out of Bavaria. The undaunted exile would spend the rest of his life, another 44 years, laboring for the goal of world revolution. By 1789, Weishaupt's influence was already being felt in a new secret society known as the German Union. Initially disguised as an anonymous literary society, the organization sought to monopolize both the press and the publishing industry. In time, the market was flooded with an array of books espousing licentiousness and civil unrest. The nation's public libraries were commandeered and transformed into repositories for anti-Christian literature. Professor Robinson notes, quote, Many in Germany, however, ascribe the Union to Weishaupt and say that it is the Illuminati working in another form. So remember, the German Union is the next one that he built up, okay? Why? You have to keep changing names. But the Professor Robinson, he notes that this one is very likely the Illuminati working under a different name. In 1809, the semi-dormant ancient sect of the Carbonari was jump-started in Italy with the opening of a lodge in Alta Vendita. Uh, Giuseppe Mazzini, the guy with the poison, was initiated into Carbonarism in 1827 and soon became boss of bosses. Three years later, when Weishaupt was dying, the old con artist attempted to convince the world that Illuminism was no longer a threat by staging an impressive deathbed repentance and reconciliation with Rome. Wow. In reality, however, the mantle of the Illuminati had been passed to Mazzini. To a Gius uh, Giuseppe's, Mazzini's, better known disciples throughout his 38-year ru rule were, you wouldn't guess, Albert Pike, wow. Moses Mordecai, Marx Levy. Do you know who he is? Yep. Karl Marx, yep. who had the power of the media. Who wants an altar call after this, you know? <laughs> While Marx mo wrote the Communist Manifesto in 1847, Pike became the undisputed head of Freemasonry in America. A committed Satanist, Al spoke 16 ancient languages fluently. Under the inspiration of Weishaupt's times, dozens of secret societies were popping up everywhere. Giving added emphasis to the text, the whole world lieth in darkness. According to Miller's occult theocracy, the leading spiritualist forces in the 18th and 19th centuries would include the Rite of Swedenborg, Stockholm, 1721. Supreme Conseil and uh, Grand Orient de France, 1725. The Convulsionaries of St. Medard, Paris, 1731. The Royal Order of Scotland, 1715. The Strict Observance, Saxony, 1751. The Martinist Order, Paris, 1754. The Illuminati of Avignon, Paris, 1716. Ancient and Accepted Scottish Rite. American and Ancient and Accepted Rite, London, 1761. The Order of the Mopsy Frankfurt, 1763. The Rite of Zinnendorf, Berlin, 1766. The 
Philalites, Paris, uh, 1773. The Tugendbund, Berlin, 1786. The ja Jacobins, Paris, 1786. Jacobins are going to be tied to the French Revolution, you'll find out. Anyway, the Knights Templar of America, 1790. The United Irishmen, 1791. The Orange Society, Protestant and Masonic, 1795. The Philadelphians, Besancon, uh, 1798. The Scottish Philosophic Rite, 1799. Modern Knights Templar England, 1804. Uh, Modern Knights Templar France, 1804. Modern Knights Templar Sweden, date unknown. Rite of Misraea Milan, 1805. The Sir New Rite, 1808. Carbonarism Italy, 1809. Remember Manzini there. The Manchester Unity of Odd Fellows England, 1810. The Hetaria of Greece, Odessa, 1814. The Hong Society of Ch China, 1815. Rite of Memphis, Cairo, 1815. The Calderari, Naples, 1816. French Carbonarism, 1820. Modern Knights Templar, Poland, 1822. Brahmo Samaj, India, 1830. The Mormons, USA, 1830. Independent Order of Benai Barith, New York, 1843. The Baha'i Movement, 1844. The Independent Order of Odd Fellows, USA, 1844. Modern Spiritism, New York, 1848. The Eastern Star, USA, 1850. Le Alliance, Israelite, Universelle, 1860. The International, First and Second, London, 1860. I only got through to uh, one, uh, two thirds. That's it. I can't read it all. And as it, Grady writes, and as if all these satanic clubs were not enough evil, the numerous secret societies of Roman Catholicism must be taken into account as well. The most powerful Catholic society has been the Knights of Columbus organization founded in 1882 in the United States by a Roman Catholic priest, Reverend P. McGivney of New Haven, Connecticut. Some of the other Catholic muscle included the United Irishmen, the Ribbon Society, the St. Patrick Boys, Young Ireland, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, Phoenix Society of Skibbereen, the Clana Gael, the National Land League, the Invincibles, uh, the Gaelic Athletic Association and the Irish Socialist Republican Party. Uh, wow, a lot. Dozens of these goon squads can be viewed marching down Manhattan's Fifth Avenue during the city's annual six-hour St. Patrick's Day Parade, the Vatican's number one public relations coup in America. Finally, Larson's an Encyclopedia of the Cults adds, quote, spiritualism was introduced to England and Germany in the 1850s. And then in the United States, mediums flourished during the years 1880 to 1920, end of quote. It is indeed a staggering thought to realize that these numerous societies constitute but a short list of what has really been lurking in the dark. Do you realize how much infiltration then there is? And because the Lord chose America to be the bastion of New Testament Christianity, the God of this world, marshaled the majority of occult forces here on May 9th, 1798 at Charlestown, Massachusetts. Reverend Jedediah Morse, father of the renowned inventor Samuel F.P. Morse. Oh, the Morse cult. Yeah, you know what he said? He preached a sermon against Illuminism, the Illuminati. Oh, wow. They knew this. Quote, he preached practically all of the civil and ecclesiastical establishments of Europe have already been shaken to their foundations by this terrible organization. The French Revolution itself is doubtless to be traced to its machinations. The successes of the French armies are to be explained on the same ground. The Jacobins are nothing more nor less than the open manifestation of the hidden system of the Illuminati. The order has its branches established and its emissaries at work in America. The affiliated Jacobin societies in America have doubtless had as the object of their establishment the propagation of the principles of the illuminated mother club in France. Another preacher, July the same year, Reverend Timothy Dwight, he's a president of Yale University. You know what he said? President of Yale University, quote, Shall our sons become the disciples of Voltaire or our daughters the concubines of the Illuminati? Conspiracy, remember that. Huge success from the devil, you can see. Huge success that everyone thinks that this is crazy. It's a scary thing. It's a scary thing. 
Wait till you, we hit the 20, 21st century, all right? Then you're going to really see something going on. Okay, Dr. Upman's book, Church History, page 78. Let's review some things. So, Grady, let me just finish off some things. He mentions about the, if you read chapter 10, lots of good stuff. He mentions about the confusion, like I told you before, with the Freemasonry intermingling with Christian foundations, with the, the, the building structure, the, the flag, our American flag. He mentions about the Potomac. And then for some of you who get scared, there's like a pentagram symbol if you go from an aerial view of some of the building structures of Washington, D.C. But it's funny that, uh, you know who are the ones uh, helping out with the shipment? Catholics were involved. Sending out shipments. And then, you know what? Some of the Baptists or infurious people influenced by Baptist doctrine, they didn't agree with some of the building structures that they threw it in the river, actually, the Potomac River, believe it or not. The obelisk especially is very interesting because some authors mention you don't see that everywhere. So where do they get that from? You can only get it from Egypt or the Vatican. Go back to ancient church history. Who are the two enemies? Rome and Alexandria, Egypt. All right, there's, uh, it, the spirit never left. The, that evil spirit never left. It's going through uh, hidden means. But anyway... Uh, lots of interesting stuff, all right, which I recommend to read. Now let's talk about the Constitution in review. It is so important, like I emphasized before, that's what destroyed that Holy Roman Empire, okay? Uh, remember, everything is uh, the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, nothing Christian about it, except one thing in the Constitution, all right? One thing, the First Amendment, remember. Page 78, Dr. Upman's Church History, Volume 2. Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, and George Mason all took the Baptist view of, quote, no taxes to support ministers, end of quote. Together, they finally produced the act to establish religious freedom. This Virginia bill became the real and immediate cause for the First Amendment to the Bill of Rights. See, it's all Baptist influence. <laughs> Thus, the First Amendment was not just the work of anti-federalists. It was the work of Baptists who put pressure on the President of the United States. Right in his home state, Virginia. The state that produced six presidents out of the first ten. Why do you think the Illuminati went to Virginia? You, you got to be blind if you don't see a battle between heaven and hell right here. You got to be totally blind not to see that. This is how it came to pass that one little bill among nine others became more important to the national security of the United States than the Constitution itself for national security in every country in Western civilization up until then. Why? Because all of them, when we studied all of world history pretty much, was what? Dependent upon papal politics operating through Jesuits and orders. This is a huge uh, historical uh, change you got to realize. It's what made a whole difference. Man, we ought to win the Nobel Peace Prize, us Baptists. Where's our Nobel Peace Prize, man? These people. You know what? They don't want that independence anymore. They want that dependence now. With the United Nations relying on each other and they can't take care of themselves. And they send their money, the tax dollars, to some other country because we're all interdependent on each other. Booey, man. The national security of Ireland today will be settled at the Vatican as will the national security of communist Pope could align every major third world nature, uh, nation in the world except the USA and Great Britain, including Scotland, and use them for any unholy purpose that would expedite the unity and power of the Catholic Church. The first bill in the Bill of Rights prohibited Congress from passing any laws to what? Four things. One, recognize the Catholic Church or its teaching as a Christian religion. Amen. Two, force anyone to be baptized or sprinkled by any church. That Baptist doctrine was salient. That's why we're called Baptists. That's why they were called Anabaptists. If you look at the beginning of the apostles, that Baptist doctrine was salient to distinguish from Catholics to the right Bible-believing crowd. It was that uh, doctrine of baptism. Imagine killing, torturing person over sprinkling. 
over getting water baptized. Isn't that stupid, man? But that was a key thing ever since the beginning of Catholic history. Anyway, stop talking, Gene. Just read, okay? I don't, I'm not going to finish this. Third, make people attend Mass or recognize the Pope as a spiritual leader. Amen. Four, kill or imprison people for ridiculing the Mass and the Pope. Amen. Five, kill or imprison people for identifying the Pope as the Antichrist. Amen. Six, force Protestants to support Catholic schools with tax money. Number seven, stop Christians from witnessing to Catholics. <laughs> the First Amendment to the Bill of Rights ensured that America started its national life as an anti-Catholic nation Amen. for the entire body of papal decrees and Catholic councils. A.D. 500 to 1900, Ruckman argues, taught that all seven items lift, listed above were the duties of national governments which they owed the Catholic Church. National governments, according to Roman Catholic canon law, are to enforce the seven items above with policemen or armies. We're getting there. Yeah. It's just not called Catholic now. You have to hide the word, okay? All right, time will come. Time will tell. All right, Dr. Uckman uh, writes here on page 120. No poop. Uh, poop, excuse me. Well, he's called that too, all right? No, no pope, no pope could have honestly backed up the Bill of Rights or the American Declaration of Independence, even if five million Catholics in America had been patriotic Americans. The one Catholic who signed the Declaration sinned against the religious convictions of his own church. <laughs> According to all papal decrees and canon laws, the Pope has the right to regulate the consciences of every Catholic in the USA or anywhere else, and if possible, to enforce executions on them as heretics if they teach separation of church and state. That is one of the Baptist distinctives, as I've emphasized over and over again, the separation of church and state. Yes, we do have that in our statement of faith. We're not crossing that one out. That is, when you cite Catholic papal decrees and Catholic canon laws, you slander the spirit of Catholicism. Page 121 from Ruckman's book. With the rise of the national states and the rise of nationalism and patriotism, why do you think right now our communist socialist agenda is really against that? Yep. Because it's getting rid of that uh, unity where you can, one pot can control the whole group. The Pope's problem once again became as complicated as it had been in the period following the Crusades. The problem was how to overthrow these national governments and regain control of them by replacing their leaders with Roman Catholics. To this end, all of the efforts of the hierarchy were bent from AD 1582 to 1990. In the background, therefore, behind, behind the outworkings of this is key. Because Catholics uh, is broken. How are they going to ma maintain it? European diplomacy from 1582 to the present will be found the Vatican hierarchy now blaming the, quote, liberals or the, quote, radical elements in the church for anything and everything that goes wrong in her relationships. Now ducking issues and claiming immunity from criticism on the grounds that the majority of Catholics don't feel that way. Now hollering persecution when she is caught red-handed in acts of revolution, fraud or treachery, and above all blaming nationalism or bad rulers for all the ills of the world, including war and poverty. It's Trump's fault. It's Trump's fault. It's national leaders' fault. It's all these people's fault. You see that right there? That way, the Catholics can join the liberal side and the liberals will say, oh, the Pope Francis is a nice guy. I like how he thinks. Diplomacy. Diplomatic relations. Okay. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Now, you know what Dr. Ottman said? I have, I have to read this. This is so funny, okay? This is so funny. I have to read this part, okay? I, I didn't mark this. 
When a political organization as large and powerful as the Roman Catholic Church had been the Holy Roman Empire suddenly loses its hold over a whole nation of people and that nation comes into possession of the largest navy and colonial possessions in the world, are we to think that this organization composed of individual popes, bishops, cardinals, Jesuit priests, archbishops, nuns, monks, and nuncios is going to say, well, Romans 8, 28, let's get back to preaching, prayer, and Bible study. Oh, only Rockman. I had to read that. It was so funny. I had to read that. Okay. Now, you've heard some parts where they said that uh, the Illuminati was behind the French Revolution. Now, remember, the Illuminati is tied to Jesuit influence. Don't forget that. But you're also going to see Catholic names, Catholic influence. You cannot separate that behind it. So here's on page 131. Dr. Upman writes, in 1789, the French Revolution began June 20th with the mobs of Paris storming the Bastille on July 14th. The Catholic king, Louis XVI, uh, and his family were arrested June 21st, 1791, and were beheaded in 1793. The French Revolution used three hack words as gimmicks for killing. Liberty, equality, and fraternity. Black Lives Matter, excuse me, I just added that in. No one got any liberty. No one came out equal, and the fraternal aspects of the leaders, Danton uh, Robespierre, uh, Robespierre, is that how you pronounce it, Sheila? Pierre, Pierre right? Rob, Rob Pierre, Robespierre, all right, I'll just say that. Marat, Voltaire, Rousseau resembled a pack of wolves fighting over a dead carcass. The French Revolution set a pace for Europe, which continued until the Bolshevist Revolution of 1914. In both cases, the revolt was against a monarchy under the control of a state church. In France's case, Roman Catholic, and in Russia's case, Greek Orthodox. Now, don't let that confuse you. This might sound like that, oh, we're angry with the Roman Catholic Church, so they're anti-Catholic. But remember this. Roman Catholics, how they always survived is they always uh, act like a chameleon. They morph. They flow with the times. They flow with the times. That's why you're going to see uh, monks, nuns, and uh, priests uh, helping out and hiding out the Jews during the Holocaust, whereas you see other priests uh, working with Adolf Hitler and s feasting on a table. See, the, it's a, how, why do they do that? Whichever side loses, or however you go with the times, we're still going to have a foothold in something, okay? Uh, let's keep reading on here. Uh, to eliminate a discussion of post bishop cardinals and patriarchs and their goals from such operations is the height of madness. See, Dr. Upman argues, no, you cannot eliminate Catholic influence. It is to slander the name of history. Voltaire and Molaire were educated by Catholics. Danton and Marat were raised and confirmed as Catholics. Every king in France from 1610 to 1789 was a confirmed Roman Catholic and in submission to the authority of the Roman hierarchy under pain of excommunication or interdict if he didn't obey. Dr. Upman also wrote in another page, every pope's confessor is a Jesuit. There isn't any question about the reasons for the revolution. A corrupt clergy and a corrupt church allied with a corrupt king and a corrupt government couldn't call for anything else. Page 133. Seeing that all was not yet lost in La Bella, France, by 1790, the Pope got his mafia in Austria to go to work immediately. They began to intervene with the Frenchmen on behalf of the Pope's right to investiture so that the subversive agents from the Vatican State can continue to operate and work for the overthrow of the new government. This Catholic political movement was a real occasion for the, uh, I think, I don't know how you pronounce this, Gyrondist reaction, which executed the king, eliminated the birth of Christ as an historical date on the calendar, and began what is called the reign of terror. Now, why is that? That sounded more peaceful than the French Revolution, right? You know? <laughs> Harassed by Roman Catholic politics and politicians from France, Italy, and Austria, the Committee, uh, the committee of Public Safety, OSHA, uh, Dr. Upman writes, OSHA and H-E-W, <laughs> <laughs> abolished all the freedoms they had just advocated in the Declaration. Marat was murdered by Danton, and the Roman Catholic 
Robespierre, uh, took over in 1794. The reign of terror was called the Brotherhood of Man. See any modern Roman Catholic confession of faith. And although it temporarily killed the power of Roman Catholic imperialism in France, it failed to restore the Bible or belief in the Bible as a cure for France's trouble. Now, all of this belongs in the realm of anti-church history, for it deals with Catholic conspiracies and Catholic counter-offensives against the worldwide teaching and preaching of the AV 1611. Now, let me read some, uh, one quote right here. We read that the Illuminati uh, was behind the French Revolution. And also, I'm going to uh, read one quote here, okay? So if I can find it quickly. This is from Archduke Maximilian Francis, 1815, who is the youngest son of Maria Theresa, Archduchess of Austria. Okay, this is big. They, he's referring to the Jesuits, have so constantly mixed themselves up in court and state intrigues that they must in justice be reproached with striving after universal dominion. They cost kings their lives, not on the scaffold, but by assassination, and equally hurtful as a society of Illuminati. They were the foremost among the crowd at all events who applauded the murder scenes in Paris. See, they were involved. They held in their hands all the springs for working upon mankind. Money protection were plentifully at their command. And it is impossible, therefore, to indulge in a conviction that the reestablishment of the society of Jesus can be productive of any benefit whatsoever. All right, here's another one. Andrew Steinmetz, 1848, who was an ex-Jesuit and wrote a book, History of the Jesuits. Quote, the Jesuits and their friends ascribe the French Revolution to their suppression. Remember, during their the Jesuit suppression, their time of almost two centuries, it's attributed to them, their workings. How about that? Emmanuel M. Joseph's son, 1968, who's an American, who's a physician and historian, said this in the book, The Federal Reserve Conspiracy and Rockefellers. Weishaupt and his fellow Jesuits cut off the income to the Vatican by launching and leading the French Revolution. The next one, by directing Napoleon's conquest of Catholic Europe. We shall cover Napoleon Bonaparte. Remember, the Jesuits were kicked out by Vatican, Pope, Catholic nations, Protestant nations. Yet they, that sneaky snake became more powerful than during the Dark Ages. There are some interesting factors of their workings behind Napoleon to pay back against the Catholic countries and the Vatican who kicked out the Jesuits. Next time. All right. Heavenly Father, I pray that tonight's teaching was a blessing to the hearers and we've been more aware of our history and grown knowledge and that uh, we won't be dumb, Lord, that we won't be dumb realizing this is truly a battle of heaven and hell. And we are, as Bible-believing Christians, are to preach the gospel as much as we can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.